Hello, it's an honor to speak at the annual meeting. I appreciate the initial invitation from Maz van der Lech and the uh, committee allowing me to participate. This talk is on how I approach biceps tendon pathology. These are my disclosures, which are available on the AAOS website. I want to take just a brief moment to talk about Freddie Fu, has, who has had an impact on all of us around the world. I did a fellowship with him and have been back to Pitt a number of times. And one of his legacies is the friendships that he's allowed, including my meeting Moises Cohen. I was asked to talk about surgical approaches and highlight some techniques. I'll do it for isolated biceps treatment as well as for those biceps pathologies associated with cuff tear. So these are the biceps treatment options that I'll review in the talk today. Some factors that I consider when discussing this with a patient are a combination of what my preferences are, particularly age and the level of activity, as well as other aspects, but also have to take into account the patient's preferences. As far as open subpectoral biceps tendinitis, uh, this is not something I use very often. I see plenty of patients referred to me. These are just some examples of patients with failed uh, subpec surgery, including here. And fortunately, I've not seen this type of a fracture. Another option which I do use is a tenotomy. This is the uh, right shoulder in a 74-year-old with obvious biceps tearing, but also a complete subscapularis tear and a posterior superior uh, cuff tear. I know I'm gonna have to do a fair amount of work in this patient, so uh, he was amenable and I proceeded with a biceps tenotomy which allowed me to focus on the subscapularis as well as the supraspinatus and infraspinatus repair. Is there a clinical difference between tenotomy and tenodesis? This has been looked at out of the group out of Columbia where I did my residency. They found that while patients have strong preferences, the outcomes are, tend to be similar in function as well as pain relief, strength, and motion. So it may not be as critical. This is a patient who's uh, 63 with uh, early onset arthritis, and he was amenable to an arthroscopic tenotomy, which I did here with the scissors. And this allows him to start therapy immediately postoperatively to gain and restore his function. But in the end, the combination includes uh, the patient's preferences and they trump what I want. As far as the arthroscopic tenodesis options, we can talk about fixation method, whether you use an anchor or an interference uh, fit into a socket, the so-called onlay versus inlay. This has also been looked at in one study out of Korea. They found no difference between socket fixation and anchor fixation. I do tend to think there may be some difference between the fixation with securing the tendon within the bone. An arthroscopic suprapectoral tenodesis through a socket. This is a right shoulder where we're looking from the lateral portal down the bicipital groove to the suprapectoral region, which you can expose. It's below the lesser tuberosity here. And I'll use an awl as opposed to a reamer, which I learned from Gilles Walsh when I visited him in the OR in the late 90s, with markings to know how deep the all is going, and this allows me to compress the bone in a nice uh, socket and then implant the biceps tendon for secure repair. This is a left shoulder demonstrating an anchor being placed, and this is also in the suprapectoral region. Often you see a ridge below the lesser tuberosity so you know where you're located. I'll place an anchor, pass these through the tendon. You can tie them, there are knotless approaches as well. And this is where the anchor is positioned. How do you find the biceps groove when you expose it? There are some steps. I like using a direct bicipital portal, which I've been using for a couple decades. And that's about five to seven millimeters inferior to the anterior lateral corner of the acromion, as you can see here. And this is a spinal needle showing that from an old slide from 2005. I start off by placing spinal needles 
from the subacromial space into the joint as I'm viewing it. It can be one, or in this case, two spinal needles. And then you look for them sort of goalposts in the subacromial space. Here, another case, you can see the spinal needles coming through the skin. You identify them in the subacromial space. Look further distal. This is the spinal needle that I'm gonna to use to identify where I'm gonna place my direct bicipital portal. Then you can either expose the biceps groove with a scalpel or cautery or a wand to retract it out of the way. And it always tends to be a lot more vertical than you would think when you're looking for the groove. And you can palpate it with a probe before you expose it. Does it really matter where you place the tenodesis? Again, I do think there are some differences. However, you can't argue with the, the brass study, Steve Snyder, I'm sorry, Steve Burkhardt and all his fellows, uh, over a thousand cases, which they've had over 90% uh, good or excellent outcomes. So there are times where I will place uh, fixation proximally. This is a massive right posterior superior tear with biceps pathology. I'm placing the anchor just lateral to articular margin at the biceps groove. I'll pass sutures around and through the biceps and tie them to encircle the anterior half, the posterior half, and then the entire biceps, and then proceed with, in this case, a double row repair. However, more recently, I favor incorporating the biceps into the repair, uh, which I picked up from Butch Krishnan a number of years ago. This is a right shoulder where I'm not able to fully reduce the posterior superior tear, so the biceps will be exposed. So I pass one of the anchor sutures through, around, through the biceps tendon, and then through the overlying soft tissue. This is the anchor suture through the soft tissue. I'll remove the intraarticular portion of the biceps, continue on with passing my sutures through the cuff. This is the suture through the biceps, then through the overlying cuff tissue. There's the bicep stump. Additional anchors are placed, and this is the completed repair. And here is that suture that incorporates the biceps. Here's another case where I've uh, passed the suture in uh, and through and around the biceps a number of times, incorporated into the repair. And this is the patient who just came in last week with a good outcome. Soft tissue denodesis can be used. It requires overlying soft tissue. I use two high tensile sutures. I use usually a spinal needle for passing. And this was described by Sakia and colleagues as the pit technique as they're from Pittsburgh. This is a stepwise approach. This is a left shoulder. You can see the uh, unstable slap tear. There's also subscapularis pathology uh, affecting the biceps. After repairing the subscapularis, I'll retract the biceps tendon into the joint. I'll pass a spinal needle through the anterior aspect of the supraspinatus and the posterior aspect of the biceps tendon. I'll pass a zero proline. I'll use this to shuttle a number two high tensile suture. I'll bring that through. I'll then come in the more anterior aspect of the biceps tendon with a spinal needle to shuttle the other end of the number two high tensile suture in a mattress fashion. I'll then repeat these steps with a second suture more medially in a similar uh, uh, cadence. And here you can see them all pass through two horizontal mattress sutures. I'll remove the intraarticular portion of the biceps, demonstrate where the biceps will be opposed over the soft tissue. This is the external view. This is the subacromial view. Sometimes the sutures aren't that easy to see initially, but you can always find them and then tie them together. Here's another case, two sutures tied in the subacromial space, and then I'll tie one limb from each suture pair together to complete the construct. You can weave the sutures through the biceps in a couple of different fashions. Here I am going around the biceps, 
to make sure you have a good secure hold on the biceps tendon and then tie it in the subacromial space. Here's one case example of a medium supraspinatus and infraspinatus repair with a biceps tear. This is what it looked like. You can see the delamination posteriorly in this left shoulder, the medium sized tear, and then the biceps pathology with intrasubstance tearing. The subscapularis is normal and the tear is reducible. So I elected to do an arthroscopic tenodesis in the groove. I've prepared down as the groove, place my anchor in the mid portion of the groove. I'll pass two sutures anterior to the biceps. I'll then pass two sutures through the biceps after I retracted about a centimeter proximally. I'll again shuttle these through. And then I'll have uh, the sutures, I'll tie them to encircle both halves of the biceps and then the third suture will encircle uh, the, the entire biceps tendon. Do a tenotomy about it with a centimeter stump, remove the intraarticular portion and there's a nice secure tenodesis. I'll then go on to repair the uh, rotator cuff tear. I elected to do a double row repair with a single medial anchor, a single lateral anchor. And here you can see the final construct there in the circle is the uh, biceps tenodesis sutures. And when we look inside the joint, you can see a good restoration of the footprint. Here's the uh, tenodesis anchor and the outcome at 15 weeks and at 28 weeks. In rare circumstances, you can preserve the biceps. This is a patient that had elsewhere a right open biceps tenodesis. He wasn't satisfied with it. I now indicate him for a left cuff repair with the possibility of bicep surgery. Here's his uh, tear with the biceps fully exposed. However, I was able to reduce the soft tissue over the biceps and fully reduce the cuff tear. So I placed two monofilament sutures, which I'll use to shuttle repair sutures. I proceeded with my steps for the double row repair. And here's the completed repair. And these are ethabon sutures that I use to close the soft tissue, cover the roof of the biceps and preserve it. I will note that when I do this type of double row repair, if the anchor does not allow for internally locking, I'll tie alternating half hitches to complete the construct. Again, this was the right shoulder preoperatively, which he wasn't happy with, the left shoulder postoperatively, and his outcome at four and a half months. So how do I decide on what biceps treatment? In any setting of bicep pathology, the less emphasis the patient and I put on the biceps, the more proximal I tend to go with the treatment option. And the most proximal is a biceps tenotomy. In the setting of an isolated biceps uh, tear, the more emphasis the patient and I put on the biceps, the more distal I tend to go with an arthroscopic treatment option. And the suprapectoral tenodesis in the socket is the most distal, although I'm tending to use this less and less. When there is a cuff tear in the biceps, the more emphasis we put on uh, what we need to do with the biceps, I'll devote a separate implant to the biceps treatment option. However, currently the most common uh, step for me when there is a rotator cuff tear is to incorporate the tenodesis into the repair, whether it's a single row or double row. As you can see in these steps, bringing it through, around, through and around the biceps and then into the overlying soft tissue, remove the intraarticular portion, and then proceed with the remainder of the repair. Thank you very much.